Mr. Flat. Tell me about shooting that very last scene in the mine where you have to sort of like suddenly turn into this guy who's got this crazy amount of memories rushing back and you're kind of snapping and you've got this look on your face that's sort of this weird mix of horror and insanity and satisfaction. So, you know, what was the direction? What were you thinking of? Tell us about shooting that scene. I had no fucking clue what I was doing. <laughs> and no, that's honest. I, you know, I was a very young actor. It was, I didn't continue in the profession somehow. It survived my absence for 29 years. Uh, I, George, we shot some of those scenes in a set in Montreal, didn't we? Some of the payoff scenes at the end? Okay, I'm misremembering that. Um, you know, uh, I, I think I just tried to, frankly, you know, um, well, you've heard kind of the conditions in which we were all working. Yeah, a lot of times you just had to wing it, you know, and hope that you were in the ballpark or getting it right. I'll be frank with you, there's uh, a few kind of groaner moments for me in the film where you just want to kind of sink underneath the chair and stay there. <laughs> Only a few. Only a few. I'm worth a few. But, you know, uh, it, it was fun to watch it tonight. I think we got it right a lot of times, you know, and uh, I was saying to George earlier, for me, what uh, one of the really, I think, best creative, you know, I'm a filmmaker now myself, an animated film, one of the best choices who made this film made was to shoot it right in that little town of Sydney Mines, Nova Scotia. It's an amazing palette that ends up on the screen. You couldn't create that if you had a, a 10 million buck budget to build sets and stuff. So. That town, which uh, Penny Hadfield was the production designer, she made that town into Valentine's Bluffs. We left it dressed for seven weeks. People would drive into the town and come to the city hall and to the police department where it said Valentine Bluffs Police Department and say, hey, you know where Sydney Mines is? My, where's Sydney Mines? You're in Sydney Mines. Oh, this is Valentine's Bluffs. How'd you get to Sydney Mines? And that was the truth. And I want to ask Elf as the only guy in here that had a death scene in the film. Uh, What's it like to shoot a death scene? Do you still have your own prosthetic head? Well, actually, uh, the, the body that you fell down, believe it or not, it wasn't real. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to tell you how that happened. You heard it here first tonight. <laughs> it wasn't real, it was all fake and everything. Um, I uh, got a call from George, he was in Montreal, saying, um, listen, we gotta send you down to Los Angeles. We need to have a full body cast of you made uh, with your head and everything. So I'm going to meet you at the airport, and uh, we need to discuss this. So, so, sure, um, so I met George at the airport. Uh, I had my ticket in hand, ready to go, and we're sitting in a restaurant that was filled with customers. And he says, "Okay, you know, I, I need to see some kind of poses that you can have for for Howard when he's hanging. And so can you just stand up and do this for me, man?" <laughs> sure. <laughs> so I get out of my chair in this restaurant. And I'm trying like. It was, this went on. Finally, we agreed on a pose, and he said, well, make sure you do, you cover this point and this point. So I flew down to L.A., and I was put up in a hotel, and the next morning I went to the Berman Studios, and I met these two gentlemen, Tom and Ken, and they, um, they had come in, and I had to wear this little bikini bathing suit and uh, assume the pose of someone who was hanging, and for the, uh, just hanging there, and for the next uh, hour and a half to two hours, they put on a plastic, uh, or a, a plaster cast on my whole body, and uh, you can imagine after a while it gets very painful and at one point one of the guys was behind me and he was pushing on my back like this and I, I was going down. <laughs> and Tom ran up and grabbed and pushed me up. So that was flying to LA, flying back, staying in a hotel, two hours in there. And when, I, when they took, oh, when they went to take the cast off, um, before they put it on, they put Vaseline all over your body. But they didn't put enough on. So when they came to remove the cast, they had to put their hands under the cast and start pushing it away from my chest. <laughs> got a little bit of hair there. And it was ripping out. And when they got down to here, it was 
ripping out. And uh, by the time I got finished, I would have patches of hair missing from my body. And I was in a lot of pain. And I was really trying to keep the tears back and being a real man about it. And uh, when they got it off, they said, are you okay? And I said, I'll be perfectly fine after I have that, like a really nice hot shower. And they said, well, we don't have a shower here. <laughs> and <laughs> thanks, George. And when you saw the hanging scene, it was for about how long? Maybe four seconds? <laughs> That's the stuff that you don't see uh, until you hear about it like this. And I just want to add one more thing. The shower scene, at the beginning of the film, every one of us was bare naked because George didn't want to see any bathing suit lines. And the water oh, was freezing. There was no hot water. And if you notice Howard Haven the shower, I only put my arm in there and said, oh yeah, I got a present for her. I got a present for Greta. She'll never forget. So all my acting was actually real acting. It wasn't in the water. Pretty cool. <laughs> there, there was hot water in the first two takes, but you know, um, young actors, they forget their lines, so they got the cold shower at the end. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But no, you know, I mean, look, the unfortunate part was that, that what you saw with him hanging there and his head separating, what you saw there was like four seconds. We were intending to give you at least a good 30 seconds worth of, uh, of thrills and spills and chills. You actually saw the next stretch, and you saw, and, and, and you saw the eyeballs, and, and, and so on. Unfortunately, that's all that's left there now. And I mean, one, one of the things that is, you know, to me, the most uh, disappointing in it is the work that these guys, Tom Berman and Ken Diaz, did, which were so totally groundbreaking, state of the art, and this is what we really, you know, this was the movie, this was the mandate we needed to do. And, you know, all of a sudden, to, to, to just have it all chopped to hell and gone, and even seeing it now, actually, with the little snippets that are back, you go, oh my God, what, what that I would just would love to have shown it, but unfortunately, the old technology does not allow us to have copies. You know, so uh, unfortunately, it's in our heads. The few of us who actually saw it all, but uh, you know, maybe one day I'll do a comic book. <laughs> uh, I'm in for that. That sounds great. Um, we're going to wrap this up fairly soon, so we'll take a few more questions, and I want them to be. Good. Right there, please. Do you remember the name of the bar that you shot in? Do you remember the name of the bar that you shot in? And local charms of uh, the area. I don't remember anything about the local bar, but I can tell you that there's a lot of people down there that look like a lot of people. <laughs> no, I, I honestly, I can't remember the name of the bar. Um, and what was the second question? Uh, what do you remember about the local charm, the local flavor, if you will, of the uh, area? Oh, that was great. I mean, people were fantastic. Um, you know, they were very helpful. Um, most of these young actors could buy just about anything they wanted and, be <laughs> and, and abuse it. Um, yeah, so that, that certainly, they were lovely, lovely people. They were extremely helpful. Uh, the, the most charming thing that happened actually is we showed up, we loved the mine, we told them we want to shoot there, they're all really happy. We go away, we come back two weeks later, they painted the mine totally clean. It looked like uh, a bad, a, a bad set of a bad TV show. That's how shiny and clean everything looked. And these people went out, and they were so charming and so lovely, and they said, well, they wouldn't want to shoot in some no dirty mine. So they repainted everything fresh, fresh, fresh. I think that day we went like $50,000 over budget because we had to repaint the whole damn thing to make it dirty again. And they were all so disappointed that we actually did that. But they were the most charming people. I mean, I just, I just shot another picture in Nova Scotia a few weeks ago, and I tell you, it's one of the greatest places to be. People are so wonderful and genuine and helpful and friendly. So anybody from Nova Scotia here right now, 